Hi, my name's Megan and welcome back to the channel where I'm coming to you today from my coffee table in Ottawa after a long trip home from Vietnam last weekend. In today's video, I'll be sharing why I left Vietnam, the process of filing for political evacuation, how the experience was affected both on the airplanes and through airports, as well as some tips on the travel experience if you or a loved one needs to travel at this time. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up down below and then also feel free to share it with anyone traveling that may find it helpful. In my last video, I gave the reasons as to why I was deciding to stay in Vietnam for the time being. So in summary, I am still in Da Nang and I am prepared to spend several months in Da Nang if it comes down to that. Last Saturday, I made the decision that I would be flying back home to Canada. I booked the flight and was on the plane 10 hours later. You're probably wondering what happened and this is definitely something that I couldn't have predicted for myself and didn't see coming. Da Nang, Vietnam is currently in a lockdown situation, which I'll touch more on next week. But when I chose to leave, things were relatively normal, the stores were open, and beach access wasn't restricted. My biggest fear in all of this and in deciding to stay in Vietnam was that something would happen to a loved one, a family member, or a friend back home, and I literally would not be able to get back to Canada. So I knew that borders around me were closing and that flights all over the world were being cancelled and then restricted and grounded yet it never really hit me that I may not be able to get home because I would go online and I would see a few flights every single day going from Da Nang all the way to Ottawa for around 500 US dollars one way. It was Saturday morning when I checked the flights, I saw all of them there as per usual, and then I went back on Saturday night and it went from being a few flights a day to a few flights a week. These flights also went up from $500 one way to $1,500 one way. And this is in a time period of about six hours. Seeing those flights disappear was the reality check that I needed. As soon as I saw that, the decision was easy. It was made. I knew I was booking the next flight and I was getting home while I still could. Had I waited one more day, there would have been no flights with my only option being waiting another week and hope that the ones at $2,500 to $3,500 for one way didn't disappear too. At that moment, the price did not matter, nor did any of the reasons that I had for not traveling home previously. I knew that I had to book the flight and I would figure the rest out, which I did and I'm now self-isolating in my apartment in Ottawa. Next, I'll cover the experience traveling through airports as well as on airplanes last weekend. So this would have been late March 2020. And to be honest, it was the most stressful 48 hours of traveling going from Da Nang, Vietnam to Hong Kong to Vancouver to Ottawa, Canada. A quick side note, YouTube is currently censoring and restricting any videos that discuss the current global situation, so I'm not going to go out and directly say it, but I assume you all know what I'm talking about by this global situation. I definitely didn't kick things off smoothly with my first flight, which was out of the Da Nang airport. The airport was pretty much empty apart from security and then a lot of cleaning staff, and also the board showed that almost all flights for the day had already been cancelled. I was on the phone with my mom when I heard them announce my name over the intercom system, saying that it was the last chance for Megan Goujon to board the flight to Hong Kong. It was 9am. My boarding time was 9.20 and my flight was set to depart at 10 a.m. So apparently it wasn't just this flight, but many flights are departing early because the airports are so empty. My suggestion would be get through security and go straight to your gate. I almost missed this flight and I, I don't know if I would have gotten another flight at this point. Many of the shops, as well as most of the restaurants at the airports that I was traveling through were closed. So even if you're not waiting on a special meal, you may still want to pack some food and some snacks with you. I had my temperature checked five times in a two hour layover in Hong Kong, including one time immediately before boarding my flight over to Canada. Something I definitely didn't expect was to have so much anxiety lining up to show my ticket when they come out with the temperature gun. I, I, I feel fine, I'm hot, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to pick up on and yeah, I cleared it through checkpoint number two. 
here in Hong Kong with a temperature gun, but I'm definitely nervous about it when I am getting on the next flight arriving to Vancouver because Canada isn't allowing anyone that has a temperature or any symptoms of COVID-19 to board any flights to Canada. And then I would need to be put in quarantine here in Hong Kong instead. And then after that two week quarantine, I don't know what flights would have been available to get home or not, or if I would be spending however long in Hong Kong. I wish I had the footage to show you, but there was a traveler a few people in front of me that had their fever checked, tested that they did have a fever, and then were taken out of the line by healthcare professionals or security, I'm not sure, in hazmat suits. So it's definitely a scary moment. Also, don't kill me down in the comments. I'm quite aware that this mask, like this, does absolutely nothing but everyone else is wearing one i also think it's mandatory in the airports in asia at the moment so the mask stays on as for the flights all three of my flights were at least 70 percent full this is very different from when i flew to vietnam and all of my flights were completely empty another difference was that the books newspapers and magazines that are normally found in the seat back pockets were all removed on all flights there was also no food or beverage service on two out of three of my flights. Thankfully, the 11-hour flight from Hong Kong to Canada had full service as usual. I also had to fill out medical declaration forms that included information down to my seat number, even if I was just in transit and catching a connecting flight. At each arrival at a new airport, there were also staff in extensive protective gear that were waiting to board the plane and clean it as soon as everyone got off. I'm a little bit disappointed to say that arriving in the Vancouver airport was not stressful at all as things were not nearly as intense. I didn't have my fever checked. There were several staff members that asked me how I was feeling and then would hand me information on how I could self-isolate when I returned home. And most people were just walking past these staff members, completely ignoring them. So there was very little screening from when I arrived on an international flight from Hong Kong to being able to just exit the Vancouver airport or to board my next flight to Ottawa, which is what I did, obviously. Today is day one of Canada's mandatory quarantine for anyone returning to this country from abroad. The federal government implemented the extraordinary measure at midnight overnight. That means it does not affect the 1 million Canadians who returned home last week. So things have changed since I arrived and now people are provided room and board for 14 days. It's been a huge shock to go from this to being completely alone here. And the travel home was also incredibly stressful, but it was 100% the right decision and what I needed to do. I actually feel incredibly grateful that I had the opportunity to come back home and to be close to my family during this crazy and quite frankly, scary time. I'm also grateful that I did not have to pay for this $1,500 one-way flight. This was not a repatriation from the Canadian government sending a plane to come and rescue me from Vietnam. No, no. I was on a regularly scheduled commercial flight. It just ended up being covered by my travel insurance under their political evacuation clause. You've probably heard that claiming for travel insurance is a huge hassle and generally an argument to prove that you're eligible for it. At least this is what I have always been told. So even though I always buy travel insurance, I kind of secretly thought that even if I needed to use it, they would go through all the different rules and somehow prove me ineligible. It just didn't add up to me that a travel insurance provider who I pay less than $40 a month for is going to cover a $1,500 one-way flight when so many insurances around the world are not covering anything related to the current situation. Once I decided that I wanted to fly back to Canada, I immediately called my travel insurance, got on the phone with them, they opened up a claim for me, followed up an hour later by email with my flight options to leave the next day or two days later. I picked which flight I wanted and then they followed up again with a confirmation code with that airline. That was it. I didn't have to argue anything. I didn't have to provide my credit card. Uh, it almost seemed too easy, too simple, and too quick. I had a flight out the next morning and this flight was booked within a few hours of me making the first phone call to request it. I kept waiting for the catch or the bill or that only a certain percentage of it would be covered, but there was nothing. It was that easy. 
A few things that I didn't think of before going through this process that you may want to keep in mind if you are filing with your insurance to have a flight booked would be number one, you still need to check in with the airline. They give you the locator code and then you go online within the 24 hour window, the same as if you had booked the flight yourself, put the code in and check in for the flight. While you're doing this, you can also enter your frequent flyer number if it's with an airline that you collect points with. So even though you didn't book the flight, you're still able to get the points on that travel. Also, if you have any special dietary requirements, generally this needs to be booked 24 hours or longer before your flight takes off. So in my case, I would normally order a gluten-free meal, but my flight was booked 12 hours from my departure, so I had missed that window. You will likely not be able to order a special meal once you arrive at the airport or once you're on the airplane. So in this case, you can do what I did. I made a few omelets and rice, a couple meals that I packed with me in my carry-on and brought through security. As long as the food is solid, so no soup, no pudding, no oatmeal, you can usually bring it through the security and right onto the plane. One last tip would be that if you prepaid for your insurance and then your trip was cut short, why not get in touch with them once you get home and see if you can get a refund for the remaining portion of your insurance payment. Once I arrived in Ottawa, I got back in touch with my insurance and I canceled the remaining month that I had prepaid for. I received a refund immediately and there were no additional questions asked. So I don't know what your insurance will do, but it definitely doesn't hurt to ask. So all in all, I am very impressed with my budget insurance and I will leave the information on who I use down below. I hope this video was helpful to give you a better idea on how you can prepare if you or a loved one needs to travel during this whole messy situation. Next week I'll be doing a collaboration so we can get an inside look at what's really happening on the ground on different cities around the globe. YouTube will not like this video, but I think you will. So I hope you'll join me for that one next week. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you click off. Let me know in the comments down below where you are self-isolating from, and I will catch you back here, same time, same place, next week. Bye.